All right, today I'm testing out the performance of AMD's latest GPU, which is the RX 6600 XT, and I'm gonna be testing it inside of a full-blown build that I'm putting together today as well. So it's not gonna be your conventional review of this card where I pair it with like an $800 CPU and test it against a bunch of other cards, but rather I'll be testing it inside of a system that's a bit more reflective of the type of build that you would probably stick a GPU like this into. So a bit more real world, a bit more practical, uh, which uh, I think should be fun, especially because it gives me an excuse to build a new PC. Uh, the total cost of this build is around 13 hundred US dollars. It would have been closer to a thousand dollars if you could actually buy this card for its $379 MSRP price tag. Unfortunately, you cannot. And after a quick eBay search, the cheapest I could find this card online was about $620. Hey, yo, That's disgusting. Yeah, going from 379 to 620 is not, uh, is not exactly ideal, but it is what it is. And this is the world we're living in right now. So we got to make do with what we can. That being said, after putting the parts list together for this build, I've kind of found that $1,300 is roughly the lowest you can spend on a 1080p gaming PC without sacrificing too much in terms of performance or features, in my opinion. Once you start going below that, uh, it starts to get a little dicey. You're cutting a lot more corners and stuff, more than I'm comfortable with. So I think this is actually a pretty good sweet spot, all things considered, you know, given the uh, the crazy inflated prices of graphics cards right now. Before we continue, shout out to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. Manscaped is a global name in men's hygiene and grooming products, and they just sent me their performance package 4.0, which is fully loaded with a bunch of useful stuff, like their lawnmower 4.0 trim. It's an electric trimmer, completely waterproof, and it features advanced skin safe technology and a full ceramic blade so you don't get any nicks or cuts, which can be super painful down there if you've ever been there. It's got a cordless charging system, which is super convenient, 90 minutes off of a single charge, and it's got a battery life LED indicator, travel lock, and a very bright LED, because you don't want to be shooting in the dark. And yes, it vibrates a little bit. Don't let your wife near it. We've also got the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, which you can use right after you get out of the shower. It'll keep your balls smelling fresh all day, every day. Not to mention, we've got the Crop Reviver, which is a fantastic spray with cooling aloe vera if you ever want to freshen up the boys in a pinch. They also include the Weed Whacker, which is their electric nose and hair trimmer. It's completely waterproof and also has the same skin safe technology as the Lawnmower 4.0. This is all included in the Performance Package 4.0, and for a limited time right now, you'll also get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and Manscaped's Anti-Chafing Box of Briefs. Head to manscaped.com right in the out, where you'll get 20% off, free international shipping, and those two free gifts when you use promo code BITWIT at checkout. Give your balls the treatment they deserve, and check out Manscaped today. But with that said, why don't we go ahead and talk about the parts individually really quick. So for uh, starters, our 6600 XT is none other than the ASUS ROG Strix Gaming OC Edition. Looks pretty swanky. We've also got a Ryzen 5 5600X with six cores and 12 threads on board. So we could probably even do some light streaming with this build. We have an MSI B550A Pro motherboard, and this is probably the cheapest B550 ATX board that you can find right now that doesn't look like a piece of aluminum foil. Like there's some really cheap ones out there, but it's, they start skimping on a lot of features that I think are kind of important. Obviously we still get PCIe Gen 4 on here. Here. There's a USB-C, both on the front panel and the rear panel. That's pretty nice. And we have a 10 plus two power phase design and some heat sinks that don't look like absolute garbage, which is kind of reassuring. For our power supply, we have a 600 BQ from EVGA. This is semi-modular, 600 watts, 80 plus bronze. It is cheap. It is not the best unit, but it uh, definitely fits our budget for today. And it's gonna be enough to drive both the CPU and GPU uh, with that 600 watt power. We also have a sleeve cable extension kit from Asia Horse, just classic black. I got some fans from up here. These are three 120 millimeter fans. I think it was like 12 or 13 bucks for this three pack. We're only gonna use two of them, but that's like what, four bucks a fan, a little bit more than that. So not too shabby there because I think the case only comes with one uh, fan. It only comes with one. This is the P300A from Fantex. No fans at the front, but this is like what, a $60 case. And with 60 bucks, you're getting a tempered glass side panel, pretty decent cable management actually, a PSU shroud and a full mesh front panel. So, I mean, there, there's a lot that this case has going for it for, for the low price that it costs. We also have a pretty budget SSD here. This is a team group MS30 SSD. Don't be fooled by the M.2 form factor. It is just to say the Rev 3 drive at six gigabits per second. I know, feels bad, man, uh, that we have a PCI Gen 4 motherboard. We're not really using it at all, but um, at least we have at least we have one terabyte of storage in there for, for a number of games and stuff. We also have a 16 gigabyte kit of G-Skill Ripjaws 5. This is a, a kit, this is a used kit that I've already had, so there's no retail box for it, but two by eight gig sticks at DDR4, 3200 speed. I'm gonna try to overclock this to 3600 in the BIOS, but obviously no promises. Those are the parts, links to everything in the description. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, and we're underway. Starting, as always, with the motherboard. I don't think I mentioned this, but we're gonna be using the stock Wraith cooler that comes included with the 5600X, because this is a poor person build. No, that's that's not that, that's not true. It's really not. $1,300 is not poor people territory. In fact, I shouldn't even be saying the term poor people. It's gonna get me canceled. Anyway, we're gonna start off with, you know what? I'm gonna switch things up. I'm gonna be adventurous and start with the M.2 SSD. Gosh, my life is filled with such excitement. I'm gonna knock this out. I'm gonna try to get this build done sooner than later because it's already 11 p.m. and 
I need to sleep at some point. I've been slacking on my sleep. It's not good. I'm a little, I'm a little loopy right now. So you'll forgive me. Apologies in advance if this is a little bit more wacky than your usual build for me. Hope you guys don't mind, right? Totally fine, Kyle. Do your thing. Ugh. So we've got our one terabyte SSD. And the other thing I like about this board is that for being as budget as it is, uh, it still has an M.2 heatsink, which is which is cool. Not super necessary for a drive like this since it's only SATA Rev 3, six gigabit per second. Why am I just slamming things down? But it is nice. It gives us a bit more confidence if we wanted to upgrade to an M.2 or an NVMe drive, I should say, in the future. Not every NVMe M.2 drive comes included with its own. Some of them do, but not all of them. So it's nice to have the option. Where, oh, did they not? No, they have to have included a screw. They have to have included a screw. Where the f Here we go, here we go. Found it, found it, found it. There she blows. And we gotta make sure to take off the plastic peel on our thermal pad if we want it to do anything effective. I always get this wrong. I always screw up. I'm like, wait, wait, which way does the heatsink go? The ones with like little bits of marketing text on them, I actually like because it makes it easier to tell. That looks good. All right, SSD install. Hell yeah. All right, so then uh, let's do the... Uh, Let's remove the bracket. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, remove the bracket. Because we're gonna need to mount this directly to the back plate. Uh, the Wraith cooler needs to mount directly to the back plate. So we don't need this mounting system. 5600X. What a great gaming chip. I'm so glad that these chips are more accessible now than they were like last year or even earlier this year. Isn't it getting a GPU hard enough? We gotta make new CPUs difficult too. I'm much happier that you can just buy them now on Amazon and stuff. So we'll pop this guy in. Boom. We already have pre-applied thermal paste on the cooler. This is uh, an AMD Wraith Stealth, right? Stealth. I think stealth is the little one. And we're gonna mount this. I'm gonna have the AMD logo facing to the left just to give us a bit more clearance with our memory, even though it shouldn't be a problem since, uh, you know, we're only installing two sticks, but uh, I just like to be safe. You know, if you could have more clearance, why not? All right, so we're gonna make sure to plug our fan into the CPU fan header right at the top here. And then memory is next. As you can see, so far everything is looking pretty black on black. And that is by design. I want it to be just blacked out, which honestly is very easy to do these days because most parts are black, um, if not with some added RGB, but uh, we don't really have the budget for tons of RGB. So I'm, I'm totally fine with that though. I'd rather have no RGB than just like little patches of RGB. So I guess you can consider this a kind of stealthy budget build. I think we're ready for the motherboard to go into the case. Fantex Eclipse P300. I said A, I said it was the P300A earlier. It is not P300A, it's just P300. IO shield should go in first. Let's not forget that. And we have pre-installed standoffs, yay. Never never know, it's always 50-50 with a, with a case in this price range if you're gonna have to install the standoffs or not. So thank you for that Fantex, I appreciate it. All right, oh, it even, it even has a raised standoff in the middle so it uh, kind of grabs the board, uh, which makes it more secure before you screw things down. That's also really nice. I honestly think this is gonna be a really nice looking system. Okay, motherboard installed. Let's uh, let's quickly install two of our up here fans, these super cheapies. We're gonna install these at the front of the case just to give us some airflow coming in at the front. And we need some intake, because right now we only have this rear exhaust fan. It's 120 at the back. That's the only one that comes included with the case. I think I want a little bit more confidence in our cooling than that. These again are super dirt cheap fans. They even look super cheap. They're all kind of like glossy and plasticky and stuff, but you know, it's we, we just need to get some airflow going through here. And honestly, it's not gonna be that hot of a running system. Oh, oh boy. Oh, th that scared me at first. First thing I saw on this fan was the Molex connector. I was like, don't tell me these are Molex fans. I mean, they are, but they also have a three pin connector on the end. So that's cool. We can just snip this off. They are offensive to my eyes, sucka. All right. Oh, look at this. Even nice little cutouts for the fan cables at the front. Good job, Fantex. They just think of everything, don't they? All right, power supply. Let's do PSU. Chugging through this build at light speed. You know why? You know why we're going through this so quickly? Because there's no RGB. All right, semi-modular unit. Thank you. Um, let me clear these cables out of the way. Uh, we have a need for a GPU cable. I believe a single eight pin on the 6600 XT. We don't need any SATA. We don't need any um, peripheral cables, thankfully. And I, I really need to get some wire cutters to, to start cutting zip ties again with because mine broke from the Jägermeister build, if you guys caught that, when I was trying to cut uh, the PCB of a PCIe riser cable. Long story, go watch the video if you're completely confused. Fan, power supply fan, face down. Face down, because we do have a removable dust filter at the bottom here for that fan, very nifty. Nice thing about this power supply is that it's pretty short. It doesn't have a whole lot of length to it, so we actually have quite a bit of room there for excess cables we can just shove into the PSU shroud without issue. You could also stick some cables, uh, probably hide a few in that in that uh, that hard drive cage down there. It's got two, no three, three hard drive trays. 
uh, for two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives, I believe. And uh, if we remove those trays, it actually opens up quite a bit of room for more cables. All right, uh, all these cables can go back in the box. These cables can come out, extensions. Oh, another thing that takes unnecessary time in the name of aesthetics is cable combs. Putting cable combs on cables is a tedious time sink that I wish there was a faster way to speed it up. They do have the cable combs that like clasp, like that, that open and close. Those are really quick and easy, but uh, these are plenty nice, honestly, for the 30, 35. I think they've gone up in price a little bit. They're close to like 35, 40 bucks for a kit now, but still well worth it in my opinion. Okay, all right, 24 pin. Looks good, nice and trained. We've also got, so what is this, our eight pin. We got an eight pin EPS. With the pins, are the clips facing? I think they're facing up. So we're going up like this. We want this to go like this. Okay, this. How many more of these do we want to put on here? Technically, we can actually put quite a few on since we're only using a single eight pin. I think there should be plenty though. Very good, very good. I'm just gonna go ahead and route this up now. I'm ready for you, buddy. Might as well wire this sucker up right now. Shove it. And we'll worry about tying everything down later. 24 pin. Hello, hello. Might as well do you too. And the words of Jensen, come here, Papa. And it looks like we go through here. Yes, yes. That's so good. Nailed it. Perfection. More shoving. I love how cable management has just become a bunch of shoving now. That makes it so easy. There's a joke in there somewhere. I won't bother. Before I get too carried away, you know, I should probably also connect some of these smaller cables before it gets too hairy in here. Makes my life a whole lot easier. HD audio can suck it. Goodbye. USB 3, we need you. You are at the very bottom of the case. Do this cutout right hither. Hither! Uh, last cable that we have to plug in back here, I think, is gonna be our PCIe cable, which we haven't even done uh, cable comes for yet. So we'll do that now. All right, that looks pretty good to me. More cramming, more shoving. Now we're talking, buddy. Yeah. Okay, we've got uh, the rear fan. The rear fan hasn't been plugged in yet. Not a problem. And while we're here, why don't we actually tie some of this down? Tie this buddy down. I'm just gonna be lazy and tuck this up here. No one will know except the entire world. All right, GPU install, here we go. Okay, we've got this little bracket here with two thumb screws which are not captive apparently. So remove the bracket first. Move our two thumb screws holding in our expansion slots. Okay, here's our lovely Asus ROG Strix Gaming OC Edition RX 6600 XT with a giant piece of plastic wrap on it. All right, in we go. Little dust defenders, you can all go to hell. Coming in hot. All right, like a glove. And screw down. You know where we're gonna screw down, right? Screw down to Chinatown, that's right. Mm. Boom, and the final cable. Mm-hmm, you're on camera, buddy. I'll make you look nice. Oh, I even, I even put the cable combs on so the Asia Horse logo is facing the right way. You know what? That actually looks pretty good. Mm, I've done it again. He's done it again, folks. Kyle gets a 10 out of 10 from the judges, which makes sense, because he's the only judge. And you know what? I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this side panel off for now. Why don't we just go ahead and make sure it boots. Plug it in. Turn the power strip on, turn the power supply on, press power button. Uh, yeah, yeah, yup, I'm into it. I'm into it, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. It's looking good, sounding good. By that I mean it doesn't sound like anything at all. It's super quiet and it looks pretty fresh, looks pretty clean. Cable management on point, good job me. Let's install Windows and play some games. I wanna see what this thing can do. All right, Windows is installed. We've got all of our games on here. I'm gonna start off with Far Cry 5. Just a quick look at the video settings. 1920 by 1080 and ultra settings were maxed out. Maxed out across the board here. And sorry, like, I don't know why this game gives me like a big black bezel around it when I'm doing 1920 by 1080 in full screen. Actually, it does it even if I'm in borderless or something. I think it's because it's a native 2560 by 1440 panel. This is the only game it does it with though. But uh, here we go in the lovely town of whatever this town's called. Big explosions. And it uh, looks like we're getting well over 100 FPS right now in the 130s, 140s. Yeah, not too shabby, not too shabby. Oh, they brought back up. Why are all these cult dudes driving bro trucks? What's with what's with all these cult members and, and their bro trucks? It's like I'm back in high school. All the guys that would bully me were, were driving trucks just like that. You're on the phone with your girlfriend. She's upset. So on the road again. So good to be back on the road. You can see our GPU is being uh, utilized pretty well. Not quite 100% load, but uh, 80s and 90s there. 
52 C. 52, 52 in the mid, uh, low low 50s actually on the GPU, which is fantastic. CPU utilization is hovering in the mid 30s or so. Is that a civilian? Yes, it is. Sorry, dude, didn't mean it. Uh, so yeah, CPU is not being taxed quite as heavily. This is much more of a GPU intensive game, um, but uh, CPU is also getting a little toasty. 82 C at the moment. So I'd definitely invest in an aftermarket cooler at some point if, uh, if you were gonna build a system like this. 5600X does tend to get toasty. Um, and, oh, whoa. And, uh, you know, we've just got that little baby Wraith cooler on it right now, which does a fine job, but not nothing stellar, obviously. Oh my, what the f What the heck just ha- Okay, good, good, good physics, bro. Where did that guy go? His body just disappear? Oh, there he is. Bro, what happened? <laughs> you went too hard, bro. <laughs> Oh, uh, dude, cocaine is a hell of a drug. But the game looks great. You know, we're at max settings, 1080p, obviously not quite as crispy as something like 1440, but the frame rates are really good. And uh, this, this would feel a lot more fluid if I was on an actual gaming monitor. This is just a 1440p 60 hertz display, BenQ. It's a great, great panel for, for video editing and stuff, but uh, not one I'd recommend for gaming. But it's nice to know that if I did have like 100 hertz or 120 or maybe even 144 hertz panel I was gaming on right now that I'd uh, actually be able to take advantage of that because the frame rates in this game at least are, are pushing upwards of, of those frames, which is really nice to see on a $379 MSRP card that would be really cool if you could buy for that actual price right now, but that's neither here nor there. Come on, get a few more kills. Where are you going? Hey. Hey, buddy. I like how he hides behind this really wide open fence. Ooh, this looks explosive. And of course I have the weakest gun right now. Let me, can I, can I steal your bullets? No, not right now. Oh, what, what? I totally missed the explosion. Lame. That would've been cool to see how it impacted frame rates, whatever. Howdy, partner. Oh, puppy. Oh, you can pet him. All right, uh, I guess that's 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 Far Cry 5. Um, looking looking pretty good so far. All right, next up we're gonna test out Control, another demanding game. And let's see, display. Let's do 1080p, of course. Bum bum bum. VSync is off, and we're just gonna go high on everything. All the things maxed out, maxed out. We did so well in Far Cry 5. I think I think this uh, this system can handle it. Ray tracing though, hmm. Let's try it with ray tracing off first. All right. We're getting uh, some pretty decent frame rates here. 70s, 80s. I'm sure it's gonna dip into the 60s or so during combat. Can I get into a battle? Can I shoot y'all? I don't think so. Oh, here we go. Action, all right, let's go. Yeah. Any other takers? Here we go. Break yourself, fool. Come on. Oh God, I'm horrible. I've been so used to playing Red Dead Redemption 2 lately. I kind of just want to dead eye these guys, but I can't. This game looks great though. Again, we're maxed out. Let's just see what happens. And we're getting 70, 80 FPS, easy. Let's just see what happens if we turn on the ray tracing. Uh, obviously we don't have DLSS here because we're using an AMD card, 6600 XT. But let's just do medium. Let's do medium. I don't want to get greedy here. Resume. Oh. Oh. Okay, that, that, that tanks it quite a bit. Now we're hovering in the 50s, dipping into the 40s. Yeah, this is not, not worth it. Like the game looks better, reflections and stuff, pretty nice. Not, not worth the, uh, the performance hit at all. But obviously without ray tracing, the game looks great and it runs great as well. Apex Legends settings. 1920 by 1080. All right, VSync disabled. Looks like we're also maxed out here already. Perfecto. Let's jump into a game so we can disappoint my teammates. In the meantime, we're gonna eat some pretzels. Looking pretty good so far. 144 FPS right on the dot. It's really, really consistently staying at 144. 
Obviously in a game like this, that's super fast paced and highly competitive. You're gonna want super high frame rates as much as possible. And we're definitely getting that right now. Oh no, my homie's down. Meat shield on the way, hang tight. Oh sh Nope, 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 nope. Ah, son of a gun. Well, I bet my frame rate was higher than his, so I win. All right, last game of the test is Valheim. I know this doesn't sound like a demanding game, but it actually kind of is. And I realized that after testing it in my 5700G video when I was doing a lot of testing on the iGPU, this was the only game in that list in my benchmark suite that day that the chip could not run, like at all. It was getting sub 30 FPS, it was pretty awful. I'm kind of curious to see how it performs on the 6600 XT. Obviously it'll be a lot better, but by how much remains to be seen. We're gonna enable everything, maxed out, all the settings are maxed and we've got all these, uh, all the eye candy cranked up. Everything's enabled, except for V-Sync, of course. Okie dokie, and start. Resting, oh God, I'm stuck in the stairwell. Already, I spawned in the stairwell. I can't get out. Seriously? This is, this is ridiculous. How do you crouch? I feel rested, I feel trapped, I feel claustrophobic. Get the, what the hell? Okay, well, we know that we're getting around 60 to 70 FPS in the corner of this room. At the stairwell, I'd like to go, I'm gonna tire myself out. I ran out of stamina, trying to get unstuck. This is not the kind of kinky I'm into. Um, <coughs> let's just try loading back in, it's ridiculous. Please don't be stuck, please don't be stuck, please don't be stuck. Oh, come on. Seriously? Can I just, I can just destroy this, right? I can just destroy my house? I guess we should try another game. Um, <laughs> I hate this so much. And for our last game here, we're gonna test out Red Dead Redemption 2, a game that I've personally been playing a lot on my free time and uh, when I'm live streaming and stuff. So I'm actually kind of curious for my own sake uh, how this actually performs with the 6600T. We're gonna look at the graphic settings really quick. 1080, full screen, refresh rates at 144, which is the max and it looks like V-Sync's off. We are using the balance preset. Actually, there's a couple different balance presets here that'll just kind of switch. Uh, there's like a lot of granular settings and stuff in this game. So right now we're kind of at the middle, right smack in the middle between um, favoring performance and quality. Let's see how we're doing here in town. Around 90, 90-ish FPS on the Vulcan API. Not too bad. 90 FPS in this game is fantastic. It's not a super fast paced game like Apex or something. So you don't really need 144 FPS or you know, like in that upper echelon of frame rates, um, but it is nice to be well over 60 for sure. It does add uh, that, that nice layer of smoothness. I actually want to get out of town and see how things look out in the open when we're not just surrounded by a bunch of buildings. Oh my God, I swear, I cannot play this game for five minutes without bailing my horse. So GPU utilization, obviously pretty much maxed out at 100%. And temperatures are still looking really good on that, mid 50s. I'd say ambient in, uh, in my office right now is around 72, 72 Fahrenheit. CPU obviously getting a bit more toasty, 78C. Oh God, did I really just murder someone with my horse? All right, I gotta, I gotta get the hell out of here. <sighs> It's a rough life being a cowboy. All right, we're out in the open now. Nice and spacious. Frame rate still seems to be holding up. Dropped down a little bit. It was again in the 90s when we were in town and now it's in the high 80s. Still getting in the low 90s too. But man, this game looks so good right now. Even at 1080, it just looks fantastic. But yeah, this is looking and running really well right now. And uh, I think that just goes to show that, yeah, the 6600 XT is definitely capable of solid 1080p gaming. I wonder what would happen if we actually maxed out the quality settings just really quick. For my own amusement, let's just, let's just do it. It's gonna crush it. It's gonna absolutely crush it. You know what? It's not as bad as I thought. I thought we'd for sure be getting well under 50. But here we are, 1080p max settings, Red Dead Redemption 2. All right, there's, there's a bit of a dip. There's a bit of a dip, so you are gonna see sub 60 FPS at times. But in a game like this, if you're hitting 60, 70 FPS on average, you're, you're sitting pretty. And when the game looks this good, you don't really mind. Hello, hello. Okay, I live here now. This place is pretty dope. Oh, there's a gun. 
There's a gun here. Is it above me? Oh no, what, what, stop it. No, Arthur. I don't, I don't see a gun up here either. Why the heck is there a gun on my radar? You know, I think overall the 6600 XT is a solid card. It performs great at 1080p. Hell, it'll even do 1440p in a lot of games, I think. But, uh, and it pairs really well with the 5600X, just by the way, in case you guys couldn't tell yet. But um, whether or not it's worth $620, that is something that you're just gonna have to make a decision for yourself. Um, it's, it's a lot, it's hell of a lot more than MSRP. What is that, like $240 over MSRP? I don't even know what the percentage is on that, but it's, it's crazy. I guess if you can snag one for a decent price, you can get some pretty good performance out of it. So that's the build. That's the card. That's the thing. That's, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. Let me know what you think about the 6600 XT, the performance that we saw today. Pricing aside, I know it's hard to ignore, but uh, no, feel free, you know, vent. Vent all you want in the comments about, about how everything sucks, because it totally does. Um, I just hope things can normalize at some point. I, I have no idea. I'm sick of waiting. I'm sure you guys are too. But thank you guys for watching this video at the very least. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it. It helps me a lot. And you can also get subscribed to the channel for more tech content coming at you really soon. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see y'all in the next video.